Hi guys, Silver Gopher here, and I just wanted to show you a few things that I've picked up here recently. Now, as some of you may know, Penny Haven has an eBay store, and I've been picking up mostly World War II related coins from him. Now, here a couple of weeks ago, I picked up this 1943 New Zealand half crown. Now, this guy is 0.5 silver. It is just bigger than a US half dollar and a bit thicker. Now, a half crown is worth two shillings and six pence or 30 pence. And the old pound shilling system, and that would make it like an eighth of a New Zealand pound. On the obverse here, we have a picture of King George VI. Around it, it says George VI, King Emperor. On the obverse, around the coin, it says New Zealand, half crown, and the date 1943 at the bottom. Now in the center you have the coat of arms of New Zealand with a crown on top and each of those panels have uh, symbols representing different aspects of life in New Zealand. Agriculture, ranching, mining, shipping. And on either side of it you have uh, Maori inspired uh, decorations. As a bonus on this order Penny Haven threw in this set of coins that show how the metal composition changed in some of our coins during World War II. In order to save some of these metals for the war effort, they switched from a copper-based penny to a zinc-plated steel penny in 1943. And they also switched the Jefferson nickel from a copper nickel to a 0.35 silver in 1942 to 1945. Now, some of you may know this, but just in case, it's pretty easy to tell the pennies apart. But you can tell the war nickels by the mint mark, the large mint mark over Monticello. And there will actually be a P for Philadelphia. Just last week, Penny Haven had a sale, so I picked up a few things. Uh, this is actually my first ancient coin. This is a Roman coin featuring Constantine II. Some conflicts and some of the data on this coin, and I don't know that much about the ancient, so take what I'm telling you with a bit of a grain of salt. He was made Caesar in 317, became emperor, in 337 and died in 340. Now this is what they call a vox or voda coin. Essentially this is a, a vow. So in this particular one the emperor is vowing to serve 20 years extending that out to 30 years. So on the verse here you have his portrait. Surrounding it loosely translated it says our Lord Constantine, pious, fortunate, august. Then on the reverse, if you can see that, you've got a wreath, and in the center, it's uh, what 20, MULT 30, and then SMKH. Uh, the SMKH was the mint mark for Sizicus, and what this roughly says is wishes for the 20th year of reign and more for the incoming 30th year. Now this was minted in either 337 or 347 AD. It's a little unclear what's going on with this coin. But that's just one more thing to try and work out. Now I also purchased this Arizona tax token. And from about the Depression era up through the early 50s and a lot of states, they issued these tax tokens uh, to cover the small amount of sale tax that you would find on small purchases. 
These were usually in like one mil or five mil denomination. This particular one is one mil, which is equal to a tenth of a cent. It says on it, to make change, sales tax payment for one correct. Then on the reverse, you have Arizona Tax Commission with a shield in the middle showing a farmer in his field and with the inscription Didat Deus, which means God in riches. And it has a bonus, and that by the way was made out of bronze. Now, as a bonus, he threw in this 5 mil tax token from Missouri. This was worth 5 mils. Now, he also threw in a blue point and a red point OPA token. Now, these were from the Office of Price Administration. So, during World War II, people were given out ration books for different things. Uh, meat, oil, rubber, what have you. And these were basically changed for your rations. So if you didn't buy an entire pound of meat, you didn't use up an entire ration coupon, you might get one or two of these in change. And you can see they're the same on both sides. And on either side of the numeral, there are letters. Now there's all sorts of combinations of these letters and as far as anyone knows those are actually rather random but people collect these based on those letters. And these things are actually made out of vulcanized fiber. They basically take sheets of cellulose, run it through a zinc chloride bath and makes them all sticky and then they take several layers of these, press them all together to make this cardboard like substance. Now I'd like to thank Penny Haven for these coins and the bonuses. That's really cool. I'd like to thank all of you guys for watching. And until next time guys, take care.